things were all right. Like I, 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 uh, I don't know if I should really be mad about this because like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise has been like fucked up for such a long time. TMNT was pretty good actually. Yeah, the movie was good. Yeah, not the series. I, had, I mean, I, I don't know, watch I don't the series. Me neither. But I so barely watch the series. We're gonna make judgments on it. Damn it. Well, that's our but, job is. You know, teen, not teenagers, young people. Yeah, we're Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's our job as rambunctious Ninja Turtle teenagers. Hey, guys. Extreme Attitudes and Skateboards. I'm Raphael. <laughs> I have Michelangelo over here. Say hi, Michelangelo. Good job. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I'm Leonardo. We also right. got Raphael in the studio. Because he's me. <laughs> <laughs> Good Donatello, job, Raf. Donatello to my right. <laughs> Say hi to the audience, Don. <laughs> Don's dead. <laughs> we killed him. We got box. Leonardo as well. <laughs> Give the audience a shout out, Leo. Cowabunga. Uh, we're, we're tools. We're in for some tubular times today in the Pandora's podcast. Because. Because we're aliens. Because we're fucking aliens. Not that we are aliens. We are. Never mind. Uh, Still yeah. waiting to hear from Don over there. Is he back from the hospital? Don. No, not yet. Don. Why would he go to the hospital? They wouldn't accept him there. He's a teenage mutant ninja. And this is what the an alien. About. The turtles is, I mean, our lives trying to integrate with true life in New York City. Watson has to be Michelangelo. Watson is, he's, he only does cameo. He's Splinter. Then who is he's Michelangelo? Shredder. Watson can't be Shredder. Yeah. The door is Shredder. It's part of the... Because it crushes... It defeated Watson. Because <laughs> it's Watson's enemy. <laughs> Watson is training us so we can beat the so shit out of your door. door. So we can kill yeah. your door with extreme... But no, uh, Michelangelo was taken in the... Find the door. <laughs> we have to go find him. Save his life along with April O'Neil. <laughs> Who plays April O'Neil? What's, what's closest to the door? A doorknob? Shit, there you go. Oh. <laughs> yes. Don, are you back from the hospital? Yes. Why is he at the hospital? Ah, fuck it. Dude, because he died, but they brought him back to life. They defibrillated him? So yeah. You know, so. the, the electricity would totally go through. That's right, yeah. Just like in the game, just like in the game that says it's canonical, they gave him a pizza and he got all his life back. Damn right. All right, so any of you guys have anything interesting to talk about? Um, uh, we could talk about the beta release for, you know, that game coming out called Diablo 3 that people like. I thought you wanted to move away from just, like, current events and do more of a, you know, just talking about things in general. You know what I don't understand? French. Damn it, yes, that was it. <laughs> no, wrong color. Um, We're all playing Drawception, aren't we? I say, you know, it's not important right now. It is <laughs> hey, <important>. hey, <laughs> this isn't about me. <laughs> I'm not playing. That's because you can't, you can't play. That's because I'm choosing not to play. Sure. It's because I'm on Reddit. <laughs> that's, see, that's boring, though. I'm making friends on Drawback. Did you just call Reddit boring? Reddit gets boring, okay? It does. Mostly because it's just like a giant echo chamber. After, like, three hours, it's just like, yeah, now at this point everyone's just saying the same things. What, what Reddit do you go on? The Reddit where everyone just echoes the same sentiments pretty much over and over again. So it echoes the same sentiments? Sentiments. Sentiments. Siblings. Siblings. 
why I go places like r slash Batman. Never been there before in my life. You haven't been to the Batman subreddit? No. John, no one goes on Reddit as much as you, okay? It's just truth. I remember when Reddit was just a child. Oh, sp- speaking of only whispers in the internet community, and they those were the times that long forgotten by us, the great sailors of the past. Are you high? Man, I'm just drawing Ryu punching Blanca. I think it looks pretty good. What do you think, John? Uh, I can't even see it, but sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, like, uh, three, and then a crossed off three. So besides the Ninja Turtle thing, this has been pretty lame. John, tell us about your feelings of the current state of affairs. About what? <laughs> about anything, John. When I say how is life, current... the first thing that comes to your mind is... Terrible. Why? Yeah, why, why, John? Let's delve deeper into the human emotions of why and ask ourselves this and emerge from the muck, not just as humans... But as That's Devo. Humans. Devo. Yeah. So, John, how is life? Um, my life or just life in general? Just, you know... Any sort of answer, goddammit. Yeah. You know what, Taylor? Just shut the fuck up for a second. Uh-oh. Oh. Whoa. Perhaps the, the drama from John's life is spilling over into the podcast... Tell us more. <laughs> no. I don't know what you want to know other than the fact that I work all the time. It's exhausting. So one day, I was playing a game. That's it. It's done. That was lovely, thank you. Yeah. You know, okay, here's my thoughts on Mass Effect since you asked, Taylor. Um, I think you're welcome. I haven't beaten the game yet, and every time I talk to someone, what? You're going to hate hate it it because the internet told you to. Yeah, that's right. Just because Reddit told me to hate it, and it's going to happen. But no, I haven't beaten it yet, but the reason I'm not playing it so much is because I think it's too combat-focused this time. Like... Well, it's about the Geth invading... Earth, right? No, it's not the Geth, it's the Reapers, okay? What, whatever. I don't even know. But it just, it just really, it just really feels like, I don't know, I'm just going from one combat sequence to the next one. It doesn't, like, have that, it doesn't feel as big as Mass Effect 2 did, because there was a lot less, um, like, combat arenas, if you will. Like, there was a lot less places to fight. So, they, I feel like they had to think more about, like, how they're going to actually let you do this, like, you know, how, how they're going to let you win in this open world, or, like, how they're going to let you play it. Is, am I making any sense at all? You never do. No. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Like, the world feels... It's very hash, and, you know, you're very, it's very, I'm drawing a Wookiee, okay, so. Okay, so going back to coherent thought mode, I think Mass Effect 3 focuses too much on the little things that make it, um, that made the second one so popular, like the combat because the combat wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. I think this time they focused too much on it, and therefore the overall uh, mood and tempo of the game feels lackluster. feels like they sacrificed the uh, more sweeping you know, space opera stuff for more of an action movie feel. Yeah, I mean, well, not, not even that. It's like... I'm going to go here and fight something. There's no there doesn't feel as to be as much of a varied varied like 
things to do. It's go here, fight this, done. Now we're going to go to the next, we're going to go to Arena B and do the same things with different enemies. It's much like the multiplayer component where you very much just go to different uh, places and fight a handful of different enemies. Ah, oh, Hopi, I just saw your Wookiee. The one? Yeah. What is he doing? He's swearing and scaring someone while playing... <laughs> Is that tic-tac-toe? Yeah! Yeah! What uh, did you play NSFW sh- NSF- No, no, I, I'm not playing that. But okay. it's, it, the game's over. Yours was the final illustration. Oh, what was it? NSFW How can I check? Sh- Not Safe for Work show. Uh, you, Wait, can, you, you can check your own profile. How do you do this? You know your picture in the upper right? Okay, Click yeah, that yeah. arrow. <laughs> profile will be like oh. the first thing. Not safe for work show is it? I don't know. A guy watching a guy watch porn. <laughs> is that like a giant child left speechless <laughs> yeah. after witnessing sex scene? And then look at <laughs> well, this is a terrible picture. It looks like Donkey Kong, <laughs> like in front of a radio. <laughs> Bigfoot angry about losing a game of tic tac toe, and then it goes to <laughs> let the Wookiee win at tic tac toe. Yeah, I think my Wookiee's pretty damn good. Yeah, it's not bad, not bad at all. It's not as good as it's not as good a, a, a Wookiee as Bigfoot is. Certainly not. <laughs> that is the best line I've said all day. <laughs> So, John, how's life? Tell me what your favorite game is. Favorite game? Uh, let's see. Right now? Of all time. Of all time. Of all oh, time. Man. You're really just going to throw that out there. Favorite game of all just time. throwing it out there. Yeah. Maybe I... Reddit will tell you the answer. It won't. <laughs> Hey, um, how will you're not looking hard enough? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Taylor. Um, let's see, I think my favorite game of all time would have to be Super Mario sixty four. It's wrong. It really it's, is. Hold on, I'm searching our gaming for favorite. It's not wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. No, it's wrong. The best game on the Super Nintendo was Paper Mario, and. That means it's better than Super Mario 64. So your answer is wrong. Uh, I'm gonna have to say, screw you. Did you play Paper Mario? Yes, I did. Did you beat it? As soon yes. as I said Paper Mario, uh, I found someone saying Paper Mario is the best game I've ever played. Not even oh, kidding. It was probably Opie. No, no, I'm not this, it's this a, is no. not Opie. This is someone named Lalantos 908. That's Opie. It's no, it's not. not. Me. It's not me in a time machine that I went back in time else. and then set this up for no reason and then I alluded to that one just so this would blow your mind. Yeah, it's two not... days in advance setting this up. No, Obi's not that smart. Yeah, I mean, wait. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, John. Why, okay, why is Super Mario wrongfully your favorite game of all time? And don't be like, oh, it's because I played a lot as a kid. It's going to be like, oh, because the game mechanics were really pioneering the way for 3D models of its time. Alright, why Super Mario is my favorite game of all time? Yeah, r- write me a verbal essay. Okay. <laughs> I think that uh, it's probably one of the first games I ever actually sat down and beat. Um, I think that looking back, it was probably... It may not have been the most graphically amazing game that has ever come out, but it showed what the N64 was capable of. Yeah, there were problems, but there's problems with almost every game. Except for Paper Mario, but we already talked about that. It was the first time Mario had ever come to what could be considered a 3D platformer. Um, and it was just brilliant. The different worlds was just amazing. And it was one of those games that you know, it was 
I sat down and played with my dad, and it was just one of those things that, like, it's the first game that I've ever actually had a emotional connection with, that, you know, I had this, this drive to beat it, because I wanted to see it through to the end, and it became like a, like a, a thing for us, like a bonding thing for me and my dad, and then that turned into this uh, thing, especially with the, the N64 and the GameCube, this, you know, this future with gaming, and then it, that, Obviously, is you know now it's just me, but in my own my own personal system and everything like that. But it's just become it, it kind of got me into gaming to a degree. Whenever I was a kid, and even like to this day, I like the first game that I really sat down and played was Duke Nukem 3D, and like in my eyes, especially with that kind of game, I was like, I'm not the right age group for this. This is made for like you know older, older people, and then I was like, there's no way I'm gonna beat this. So I just, so I'm just gonna play it little by little. And even t- now, like I don't play games to beat them, because I don't think it's like possible. I, I like the only games that I beat are the only ones that like I try really hard. And I think, you know, that, like, it deserves to have me see the end because as much as I worked hard playing it, it worked hard trying to keep me entertained. So I, th- I think that's cool. I like, I don't know, I guess maybe I'm just weird. But, yeah, like, when I was a kid, more like Mario Kart would be my game because there wasn't a end to it. It was simply like, hey, you're playing Mario Kart now. Yeah. Isn't that great? So to that end, uh, it would be it, 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 it segues into my favorite game of all time being Morrowind because it has that open-endedness feel to it, and you don't necessarily have to play it to the end to get like an enjoyed feel out of it. I would say most people didn't play Morrowind to the end. Yeah, the only reason I picked up Morrowind is because of Toonami. Like, they reviewed, like, three games in their span of toonami ing and Morrowind was one of them. Yeah, Morrowind, and I, Icewind Dale 2, and what, yeah. was the, what was the third one? I don't, I don't know. That okay. was just an, ex, that was an expression. But I remember, like, the computer AI, like, Tommy or whatever his name was, he didn't Tom. want to play... Yeah, yeah Tom. Tom. Yeah, he didn't want to play Morrowind, but, like, the computer AI was, like, talking to him about it, and she really wanted him to play it for some reason. And then... She made a comment that the game was so long, you might not even care to see the ending. And, like, that was like, you know what? I could, I can get in a game like that. And I remember I picked it up at Target, back when you would get sh- shit at Target. Yeah. I picked it up for the computer, and I have logged over 300 hours in that game on one character. That's I pretty lo- cool. I lo- Oh, man, that's pretty sad, is what I heard. Taylor, what's your favorite game? Oh, uh, a tie between Fantasy Star 4, Final Fantasy 6, and Last Story on the Wii. Like the I game, wasn't the last expecting story. any of those answers. I know. Well, well, what were you expecting? Pikmin. Pikmin? Like Minecraft. Nah, Minecraft's fun, but, I mean, it's Minecraft. not the best game ever. I don't. I don't feel Minecraft is a game. I agree with the idea of people, the cult of people that say Minecraft is a toy. It's it's like Legos, but in your computer. Yeah, just like that, John. John's. Imagine Godzilla playing with you Legos, and that's what John was doing. <laughs> ice breath and all. Did Godzilla have ice breath? Whatever. No, no. Godzilla, uh, had, like you know, nuclear beams. Because, because that's what, yeah. Was Godzilla, like, just a mutated lizard? Yeah. He was a dragon. Yeah, like, how would the lizard have... Because it was from the Bikini Atoll Islands, and it was their reaction to the testing. It was sort of Japanese reaction to the Bikini Island testing. So... I heard that the Russians did a Godzilla movie, and it was called Chernobyl. Did they? (laughs) Yeah, but it was was a real-life movie. 
Are you just referring to the Chernobyl disaster? Or, no, I, no. I imagine. Or like, are you saying... It was called Stalker. See, that's... Then, that's not even like Godzilla. What are you talking about? There's radioactive dogs everywhere. Yeah, but that's not the same as Godzilla. Have you even Godzilla. Godzilla? I, I've seen I've seen several Godzilla movies. So why are these games you your favorite? About? Uh, like pick one of them, and then say why it is your favorite. I'm I want to hear about Final Fantasy. I mean, Fantasy Star Four. Because everyone has their own favorite Final Fantasy game. Even John. Right, John? Ten. But you want to yeah. hear about a Fantasy Star game. Yeah, like, I mean, I played Fantasy Star a lot um, with my friends. It was two and three. Played two the, on the GameCube. No, right? no, no. That th- That's Fantasy Star Online. This is back when it was just a JRPG. No, like, because Fantasy Star Online was two and three. No, there's, look, I, there was just Fantasy Star, then Fantasy Star 2, then Fantasy Star 3, then Fantasy Star 4, then Fantasy Star Online, then Fantasy Star Online 2 and 3. Okay, yeah, that's right, because Fantasy Star 2 and 3 were like on the Super Nintendo, or, they're Genesis. old. Genesis, yeah, yeah, like Genesis Master Drive. Um, Fantasy Star 4 is just, it's a, probably the best example of, one of the best examples of a, I, I of of a JRPG of a classical cell JRPG like that in Final Fantasy VI. Man, I I don't even know. It's it's I'm not gonna lie. It's partly going to just be nostalgia. It's also because uh, the story is just everything's great. I don't know. I'm doing a very poor job of describing why I like the game. Yeah, but you've also been up for like 36 hours. Okay. Not so okay. Here's a, here's here's a question. Round two. Do you think that they can uh, replicate this game again? Not like do a remake of it, but like yeah. have the same astoundingness to it. Uh, yes. Well, this is for everyone. No. So you don't think Nintendo can ever make a game that's good as Super Mario 64 again? Well, I think that. I, I don't know quality wise. I think that, to my own personal opinions on the game, that the reasons I like it are much more based on uh, a personal level rather than it being uh, a, an issue with quality. So, yeah, they could probably make a game that's just as good, but I don't know if it would be something that I would enjoy as much. Because you're not at that at that point that yeah, place yeah. to enjoy it as much. There's exactly. a, there's always a game, you know, there's always a growing up game, you know. Fantasy like, Star 4 had I mean had had a really dramatic death. I'm not going to spoil it, spoil it. But <laughs> there is a very dramatic death and it totally just sort of shocks you in, into thinking more deeply about the game, about mortality in the game. Was it Aerith? No, <laughs> this this game came out a good six years before seven. So shut up. Also, the final boss is uh, basically it's called the Profound Darkness. You're you're fighting absolute evil, living like within the existence. So, that's crazy. Are you guys even still there? Yeah, I uh, know. Okay. I'm not. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking about stuff. What you think about? You know, military stuff, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Trains and shit. Oh, hey, what makes something nerdy? Why is, say, a tabletop role-playing game nerdy, while fantasy football, which is the same thing, but instead of, you know, I I put on my robe and wizard hat, is I put on my blitz defense. You know, 
Well, why why is one nerdy and the other is just a normal pastime for dudes who don't mind math? Okay, okay, okay. Now, I put a lot of thought into this, and I think well, the, the answer that I came up with and was satisfied with was there has to be a deep backstory in the nerdy type things. Like Game of Thrones, there's there's more to it. There has to be something more to it that people can explore if they want to. Is that, is that... What about Magic the Gathering? There's Magic the, Ga- Magic there's the Gathering has... There's a story there. But no, Magic the Gathering has like a whole set of novels to it. Yeah, I know, but that is 100% ancillary to all of the, you know, actual... That's Things true. Do with Magic but, the Gathering. But Magic the Gathering has... Um, I actually, like, did research for this, okay? I actually did research. Like, how did D&D become, uh, quote-unquote, a nerdy thing? And what I stumbled upon was, back in the day... I don't know if this is true or not. Back in the day, like, a lot of people used to play D&D. And, like, that's why they have, you know, that old crappy TV show. Because it was pretty commonplace for people to do. Yeah. Um, but from what I understand, like someone from the church uh, yeah, didn't more like organic. it. Yes, so they labeled it uh, as like you know only weird people and like cretins play the game, whereas the um, so people that would that you know cared about their image towards other people, like the jocks and the the they preppy people. What? Yes, because they, they it's not the the cool suave thing to do. When the people that like didn't necessarily have that social connection, uh, they didn't care, or you know, they they just flat out didn't care. So then it became the truth that you know, like the the nerdier kids or the the different kids would play D and D, and that's why um, when something like has the wizardly tone, such as um, Magic: The Gathering, made by people called Wizards of the Coast. Uh, it alludes back to D&D, and therefore that arises again. But that still did not answer my question of why Games of Thrones... Well, yeah, see, this is this is a deal. Why Games of Thrones was considered, quote-unquote, nerdy. And then that brings me back to the backstory element. There's a lot of stuff to dig up there if you want to. Because, uh, you know, of all, like, the houses and the every... Every house has their own saying, and the topographical maps, and I don't know. Now I'm just rambling about maps. Yeah. Maps. I'm the map. So, John, what do you think? Map. What makes something nerdy? Well, I would agree that it's the people that are involved in nerdy things are the people that don't care about how other people view them. I think that something can be... Uh, I mean, I, I think there's there's a possibility that something can be nerdy and popular at the same time. It's just kind of... there. There's a fine line between what what is, you know, just fun and what is nerdy. I mean, it, it mostly has to do with if it's something you do casually or something that you have an obsession with, because most most nerds, most most people that would claim to be nerds are pretty obsessed with what they with what they consider to be their topics. And but here's another thing. Um, I'm only bringing this up because I was thinking about what's the difference between a geek and a nerd. And I what I come as the easiest conclusion is that geeks are someone who is like, obsessed with, like, one specific thing, like, computer geeks or, or, like, gamer geeks or everything. So then my question to you, John, repost fencing, ha, um, is that, um, man, you made a comment about people. Do, do nerds have to have that specific trait as well, like geeks, or, or are they just different and people world views them as one and the same. I think that okay. I think that you you're right in the in the assumption that the difference between the geek and the nerd is that geeks have 
a specific focus, but I think that you have that same personality, but you have like, th- think of it like a, a pyramid tier system. You have the geeks as the step below the nerds. I mean, the the geek the the geeky people are the are are the guys that have a, you know are obsessed with one thing in this culture we've made for ourselves, and then people that can be full on nerds are just you know you have comic books, sci-fi, video games, you know it's it's not just one thing that they enjoy that they obsess with, it's this this overarching culture they've fit into. And I, I think that that kind of stems from what it is to be a nerd is to be part of this culture. Because, I mean, you can be a perfectly normal, perfectly popular person and still be a nerd. It, it, it's just... Whether or not you partake in the subculture. Yeah, I mean, we, we just have this... We have... Uh, the easiest way to say it is it's just this culture that, we, yeah. we, that we've made for ourselves. You know, it's... that We have this... It's like we stereotyped ourselves into a box because that's, we have. That's, that's the way communities work, though. Yeah. That's the way cliques work. And everything, uh, you know, a lot of people define themselves by uh, what home console they enjoy most, or if they enjoy playing more on PC. Like we all self-identify as redditors, and we take, you know, a little at whether or not you acknowledge it at the moment. You, you take a little bit of pride in being privy to a all, all, lot of the in-jokes, you know? Yeah, do you think it's because uh, they... I mean, I don't think this is necessarily the case for me, but um, do, you, do you think it's like... Uh, uh, like the, a lot of people can't, won't, or won't get accepted into like certain cliques, so they create one themselves, just like becoming a Redditor, or, and that's why they're so ready to do they, this, or do you think it has like to... People look for their own yeah. place. Well, that that'll happen in any case, really. But uh but do you mean to say like are people choosing to become redditors because there's no other good place for them or No, I'm just saying like, you know, like oh, I I can't be, you know, a dancer or uh you know, a a, gu- a guitarist, but I'll be this. Uh, because this is it, this is more of a choice than like a skill. Does, does that make sense? No, I don't. I don't think that it's something that that you take as a sacrifice. I think it's. No, no, I don't mean to make it like sound like a sacrifice. It's just like it's harder to find like different mantles. So in order to to be on a mantle, to have that sort of like feeling of realization, you place one upon yourself. Because because no other ones would accept them for who they are. So every nerd is Batman. Every nerd is Batman, and then that's the best compliment ever. So, especially if you're a nerd. But no, the, the definition of nerd, geek, and whatever that that's mostly uh, that varies like ridiculously. You usually it's held that if you're a geek, you're just really big into. Basically, it just means you have a hobby. Uh, nerd implies. Uh, socially inept that uh, people can be you know sports geeks people can be whatever geek you know mm-hmm. like there are probably a, there are a shit ton of housewives that are total twilight geeks but they're not nerds because but they're do not, you think like actually nerds you know, they're probably nerds too yeah ho 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 um, no they're housewives all you know creaming themselves over vampires they're, they're playing that twilight like you know, pen and paper adventure. RPG. Yeah. <laughs> does, Twilight text space does, adventure would be hilarious. Oh my god! Does Edward go to the dance with me? Roll the d twenty. On an odd number, he will, and then on an even number, yeah, he also maybe. will. <laughs> yeah, but he'll do it silently. But but he'll watch <laughs> you while you sleep before. Yeah. Also, bonus. Yeah, <laughs> bonus to hotness for Edward. You'd like have a team. You smell extra good that day. Yeah, you you would have a like like a team of vampires that would go to your school, and like you wouldn't get to choose who you're dating, but you try to attract each one of them separately. 
Are you basically saying it's a Vampire the Masquerade dating sim using as many tables as Gygax would? Yes. That would be weird, but interesting. And that's what makes them nerds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think we're nerds for coming up with this. Or at least are we have. nerds or are we awesome? Oh, on a side note, do you still have the the rules for the the dice game we made? I think they're still in your car. I'm not sure I ever took them. Okay, because I found, like, scraps of one of them before we, like, combined everything. Uh, so I didn't know. I don't think you took them either. I just got to find them. Hmm. John, me and Taylor and Jacob made this awesome game using only D6s, and the dice were pretty much the DM for you. It was awesome. All right. With the way we did, it was pretty much just, like, piles and since, piles. Since you of, asked, John, yeah, let's tell yeah. you about the... <laughs> uh, it was pretty much piles and piles of, like, randomized table stuff. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm thinking of teaching myself, pro- or, like, learning some programming. And, like, I'm considering basically programming that as a uh, Skype module. So a bunch of people can just take turns clicking buttons to find out what happens. There you go. And it would just be all simplified and basically Dude, if like that was on Facebook, playability. If that was on Facebook, the game that well, you wouldn't because there's that yes and no aspect as well. Yeah, that, that's that's why I was saying it. Skype. You know. Yeah. Or whatever. I'm not sure how hard it would be to do it Facebook as well. I don't know. Well, I'm saying if you could, like, market that on Facebook, if a yeah. game played itself and all you had to do was click a button, like, that would be the most hypest shit. <laughs> You've been watching it... a lot of Two Best Friends play, haven't you? I don't want to... I don't want to... Yeah. <laughs> be the hypest shit. I mean, Spider... Do you remember that one time Spider-Man just, like, killed Mary Jane over his years of radioactive <laughs> semen? <laughs> no? <laughs> <laughs> well, that shit happened. It was the hype as shit. I like that saying. I'm going to steal that from them and use it in my life. You're welcome. You can't You can't use America. That's too obvious. Oh, I wouldn't use that one anyway. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I hate America. Yeah, that's right. That's the subtext. We're all picking up on it. America's not the hype as shit. America. That's right. John Thomas. Uh oh. Fuck yeah. <laughs> what you were we talking us. about before we like went off on like the Twilight what makes RPG? Things nerdy. Yeah, but like, how did we get to the? I dude, I don't know. Okay, okay, I got okay. this. Okay, go. I got this. Go, John. Okay, Taylor was talking about housewives creaming themselves for Twilight. And then I came in with. I'm the talking Twilight. about that. You were talking I mean, about it, housewives. He was just talking. He was like talking of that. Yeah. That wasn't. That wasn't like the object of my discussion. Yeah, yeah. it's not like we sat down. We sat down. And we wrote a list of subjects, and then like one of us like, okay, guys, but we have to talk about high, housewives creaming their pants. Like that is. <laughs> that has to be done. Okay, Ninja Turtles, and then like you know, nerdy stuff, and then housewives and pants. Yep. Makes sense to me. That's totally something that happened. Totally. What the hell's free message? I got I got a month of free calls though on Skype. From Viagra. calls are free, man. Yeah, I know. I can call landlines. Opie, I'm gonna call your cell phone. Hold on. Let me just let me just do this. Opie, it's a trap. Don't do it. I don't know where my phone is. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> ah. I'll probably have to put in a credit card. In which case, yeah. Wait, no. Are you calling it? No, I, I haven't accepted the offer yet. Hold on. Oh, well, dude, don't worry about it, man. I'm just going to not pick up and then... Yeah, well, but I'll just annoy the shit out of you. 
I don't remember my password. Oh well. I like how we have really good, like our conversations will start to go and they'll take off and they'll hit like the stratosphere and then they'll just stop. Yeah. And plummet back to earth. Yeah, I think it's because it's like 1 a.m. Our conversations are bottle of rockets. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> but damn it, they're rockets. You whatever, know what happens if hey, you get enough whatever bottle happens, rockets and you time to a rubber band? No. Then someone puts that shit on YouTube. <laughs> oh. Whatever happened to the old school, you know, like classic adventure story? I mean, like... Like Robinson Crusoe, like Captain Blood, like, you know, that sort of thing. Tarzan, like Princess of Mars. It became like, you know, just like old hat. Yeah, I suppose. It, became, like, it, came, it went out of fashion and never came back in. Yeah, much like first-person shooters will. They're going to become so oversaturated that people are just going to get sick of them. I don't know. Do I, mean, I, no. think, I think the world is just sort of waiting for another Robert Louis Stevenson to show up and write wait, a story. Wait, wait, John's about saying no, and he's people. poking his laptop. John, explain why. Why I don't think first-person shooters will go out of style? Yeah. Well, I think that they will to a degree, but I think there will always be one, at least one in popularity, and the reason being, I think that it's just kind of, I think that it'll be one of the, the ones that's special. It's not like a, a Call of Duty or a Battlefield, but where it's just run and gun and, you know, g grab an ammo refill here and there. That it's not really plot driven. I think the games like Bioshock and, I mean, you can even consider Portal a first person shooter. I, I think those kind of games will, will stay popular and I think they'll stay stay good as long as people are pushing a story element through the sieve of a first person shooter. Okay, here's a question for you then. Um, what makes games like the old school adventure games like look at and then do this, uh, what makes them die out? Uh, technology moved past the text interface. That's what I was thinking, but then um, a different thing comes up where it's not, it's not just like text adventures, mostly like adventure games in general, like Myst. Uh, there's no text in that game besides like the ones you pick up in the books. Why are there not games like that, or why are they not so prominent as they were? Well, uh, go on. Fight. I think that the reason that they're not as popular, I mean, I think there's still some in existence here and there. But it's being marketed to a very limited audience because you have this – I mean, game developers are out to make money. It, no, no, but why, why is the audience limited when it I, used to I'm be so vast? There. Okay, I'm getting there. Shh. I'm just saying. Opie. We've got to go talk. past the – we've got to go past the stratosphere. Opie, <laughs> let me talk. Oh, talk. Okay, the reason the audience is Way limited – go into the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's because... coming up roses. Why did Brad do that? I'm sorry, Jonathan. Go on. It's because gaming is currently being talked. marketed towards this this audience of 12 to 20 year olds, lowest that, common denominator, that have no attention span, that can't problem solve, that can't handle games like that. And the thing is, is that all it's doing is it's breeding this gaming community of people that can't play games that are remotely challenging. It's why games that are original aren't being made. It, because they keep just recycling the same old shit because it's what people are used to and what they can do. And it's just going to keep making them money. Until we get back where we have, you know, the gamers like from our generation can actually sit there and be like, no. I want a game that's challenging they're saying, that I can have some damn fun with. They're saying that now with the Kickstarter stuff. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, is that that's going to show them, hey, this actually can be done. It doesn't have to be a multi-trillion dollar budget. 
And you can actually market this game to this audience of it's not just really young people or really old people playing Tetris. The and median, the median age of gamers, and I mean like actual gamers, not you know like uh, poking, yeah. like bef- this. This was before you know the casual explosion. Uh, before Facebook, th- yeah. Well, not uh, actually. You know, yeah, probably before Facebook. But uh, the the median age for gamers, actual like console gamers, PC gamers, like non-social games uh, right. is is going up. It's something I think like 36 now. So, That's... I mean, the the primary o- audience, sure there's a lot of stuff aimed at the lowest well, common denominator. Well, well, well hold on. But... They might be the primary audience, but they're not the ones that will pay um, like more. Like, if this, they're not the ones that will go out and buy it opening day. Because, you know, they're sitting back. It's like they probably have responsibilities. They have things they need to do. They can wait a few months or weeks for a game that they want to play. Whereas, like, the kids, uh, like John was talking about, the 12, especially, like, the, the teenagers. Um, we'll just splurge. We'll just, yeah, we'll splurge. And they need to get that game, like, right now. They need to get the new, the, the next Call of Duty right now. Because, I don't know. I, I think that's... I mean, I understand the point, but I, I, that's sort of, like, baseless. No, no, it is. It, it, no. Um, from where I work, I actually see this a lot. And I was watching a show yesterday. Um, yeah, but that's, one... that's just, like, people coming in brick and mortar, though, in your specific brick and mortar. That yeah, You can't say that's going to be the same everywhere. No, but it it is like they want to get Call of Duty because it's the it's the just the because next one. Because their friends one. are playing it. It's yeah, I get it. Yeah, like the older the older group doesn't necessarily have that. Like they don't have to get it right then. They can wait for the price to drop for it. You know, they can Me, they can because wait. It's not yeah, because it's not a uh, you know semi crucial you know social thing for them. Like. Which, like, which means, yeah, which means in turn they won't, spend, more important to children. they won't spend as much reason. on it, and therefore it's not a big deal to market towards them. So they may be the people that play games the most, but they're not the ones that, will, that are willing to drop that, you know, that big hard cash breaking the bank on it. Uh, I, I don't really think yeah, that's the issue. I, I'm not even 100% sure what the hell we're talking about anymore, like what the actual topic is. Was, okay. was it like, uh, like it started off, uh, what happened to text-based adventures, like, oh, technology moved past that, what happened to point and click, and then, uh, I mean, point and click aren't around, not because, uh, you know, games are being marketed to a lowest common denominator. They're They're not around because... Like, have you ever played the King's Quest games? They, they just sort I played of... Peasant's Quest. That's not the same. <laughs> but like, I think it's the same. There's stuff like if you, you know, don't do the exact sequence exactly right, you can't win the game. You won't find it's out like until almost problem. the end of the game. No, it's not a math problem, because a math problem, you know the order of operations. The game, it's whatever the people who made it decide. And the they made money from tip lines. You know, people act like uh, game companies now are just sort of breaking the mold and trying to filch customers for money. That's not true. You know, E.T. on the Atari, was it 2600, right? Uh, they, made no, that in, they made that in, like, two months, you know, yeah. just to try and make, just to try and bank. And it didn't work, you know? <laughs> it got but, the... They got it famous. It's a famous game. Famous for not working. <laughs> like, oh, jump in this hole and collect dirt, basically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but, yeah, I mean, everything happening now that people are acting like it's a big deal, it's not that big a deal, and... Well, it'll just end up, you know, blowing away. Like, so much dirt E.T. tried to collect. And all this this end up getting buried in the Arizona desert. Yeah. 
It's like Mass Effect almost started off. Well, I have I have one thing to say to you, Obi. And th- this is kind of the hope that I have for the gaming industry. What? I have but one thing for you, Obi. Mm-hmm. And this is just the hope that I have for the gaming industry. I shoot. mean, what? No, don't worry about it. Keep talking. I'll punch you. I'm going to drive to San Antonio. I'm going to punch you. Then you're going to drive back? Yes. Just to punch you. This is to punch you. Probably never going okay. to probably never gonna be here when you get here. But okay. Fine. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I think that what's going to proverbially save the, the gaming industry from this, this tailspin that we're in right now to a degree is the fact that you know, you, you're you're talking about the the median age of gamers, you know, being being in the mid 30s, and you know, th- you're about to have this this new generation of gamers being raised by the original gamers. Yeah, it's great. And what it is, your your median age that you're you're talking about basically is this generation of people that played the first round of games, like they were the ones growing up playing the first consoles. And you have this this history of gaming already with them, and they're going to try to give that to their kids and get them going with what they believe to be quality games, which is what they're buying. And you're going to have you're going to see you know this this influx of gamers playing the games that should be played because they're awesome, they're story driven, they're original. It's not the same bullshit over and over and over again. And we're going to have this this gaming revival, if you will, of coming back to basics. It's the renaissance, yes. This coming back to basics of what makes gaming good, and it just has to happen. Okay, first off, I don't think games... I don't think the gaming industry right now is in a tailspin. Yeah, it's it's growing and growing. Well, uh, I I think you're looking at this through... You know, it's like superficially jaded... I, I'm, I'm talking popularity-wise in, in what is considered to be the greatness of the gaming industry. I think that it's going in a bad direction because they're they're going away from doing quality you know, quality games that they may have to take a risk on but could potentially be amazing, and they're shooing those away for these sure thing, you know, cookie cutter games. Things. Trying to hit things with the broadest cannon that doesn't exactly. necessarily impact the ground as much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, I can see that. They're always going to go with things that are going to sell. But for as many Call of Duties out there, I mean, there's always, like an example you used earlier, there's always a Bioshock. Or there's always, you know, a Portal that's a first-person shooter. Or there's always, there's always that Skyrim or Minecraft. And I think the thing uh, that can actually... Uh, pull us out of this proverbial tailspin to use your, to, you know, use your illusion is actually I've heard it before. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually say it right here. The thing that's gonna push us forward from just the money grabbing uh, wide cannon is going to be the indie industry. Yeah, it they're already is. With, yeah, they're gonna come up with the new ideas, and especially with the Kickstarter that can actually work now. I've heard you know Wasteland Wasteland's gonna do it. Uh, Double Fine's doing it. It's proving that it's did. actually it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's proving that it's actually a legitimate thing to get money behind. They're going to be the ones that can put the the trust and uh, value in themselves, and that's going to push the ideas out forward. Yeah. I think that's I think that's where it's going to come from. Not necessarily this game renaissance that yeah. you speak of. Yeah, because it's pushing people more towards trusting. Uh, the actual producers of the game as opposed to the publishers or as opposed to the uh, franchise, which is going to be a big deal regarding, you know, uh, actual quality of a game. Right. But yeah, I, I think, I mean, gaming, if anything, has just been broadening in scope and, and just... There's there's so much out there you can play. There's so much out there you can experience. Uh, some like a lot of it's even you know free. I'm you know indie stuff. Uh, digital yeah, like, development. Like digital development. Digital. 
yeah, even drawception, yeah, it's just a little sort of simple thing, but it's incredibly fun and free, but hey, like you were saying about Minecraft, I'd say it's more of a toy than a game. Yeah. That's a, that's okay, though. Yeah, um, that's fine. It inevitably, it inevitably comes to the question that we can answer some other time when it's not one thirty in the morning, is why do people play games? Like, what makes them pick up the controller in the first place? And that's actually a really it, good question. Is it to play, like, a? is it to fiddle with a toy, just like Minecraft or Drawception, or is it to get a full idea, like, you know, to, like, soak up another life, like in Skyrim, or is it to, like, get a full, like, sense of emotion in there, or is it to just, you know, burn a few minutes like uh, a lot of people use Call of Duty for? And I think with that, we'll wrap up. That'll be our next topic for next week, and that'll wrap up our little podcast. I, I just got to say, I disagree with, like, all the reasons you said, so I have a lot to say on this. Well, there but, you uh, go. It'll I be know. a great discussion. Oh, this is going to be a two-parter, and it's going to be amazing. Oh, unless amazing. we forget this we will. Yep. See, uh, <laughs> this has been the Pandora Podcast. Uh, this is Scribble Scrabble, also known as Raphael. <laughs> and then to also my is right okay. is Donatello, also known as Big John. And then... All the way in San Antonio, who I assume I'm pointing in his general direction, is Grok Monkey, also known as Leonardo. Also known as Taylor. Yeah, I guess, if you want to be boring. I am. I work at a car wash. <laughs> it's a meth factory. Meth! I, uh, anyway, yeah, good night, everybody.